Hello everyone, this side Amir Sohail and in today's video I am going to discuss about two-factor authentication for NetScaler management access. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe my channel so you would not be missing any new videos. So why two-factor authentication is important? Two-factor authentication adds an extra layer of security to access the Citrix ADC appliance. As a result, administrator is verified at two levels. Only if the password at both authentication level are correct, the administrator is allowed to access the Net NetScaler consoles. The NetScaler console could be GUI or CLI. It would work in both modes. Citrix ADC supports two-factor authentication for management access and there is no license restriction. It works in all NetScaler editions. Let's have a look on the communication flow, how the NetScaler communicate to the Active Directory and RADIUS servers. In this diagram, I have the NetScaler administrators, Active Directory server, NetScaler appliance, two RADIUS clients known as the NPS servers and RADIUS server where the authentication service and database service is installed. NetScaler console can be published over the internet and or only in internal. In this scenario, I have the NetScaler console published internally only. When the NetScaler administrator want to access the console of the NetScaler, either it is CLI or GUI, the administrator put username and password and that username and password is sent to the Active Directory to perform primary authentication. Once the primary authentication is successful, NetScaler send the request to the NPS servers and those are known as RADIUS client. RADIUS client communicates to the RADIUS components where the authentication and RADIUS database is installed in order to perform the secondary authentication. Once the secondary authentication is done, use administrator can access NetScaler console. Now question comes, which IP address NetScaler used to communicate to Active Directory and NPS server? In this scenario, I am having the load balancer configured on NetScaler for Active Directory on port 636 as well as the same load balancer IP I am using it for read NPS servers on port 1812. So here I am using the load balancer in both scenario. If NetScaler communicates directly to Active Directory or NPS client Without any load balancer, NetScaler use NSIP as a source IP to communicate to the Active Directory or NPS server. If the NetScaler communicate to the load balancer of Active Directory or NPS server, in case NetScaler subnet IP will be used, that is SNIP. It's very important because on the radius clients, we have to define the IP address of the NetScaler in order to process the request. So if you have the load balancer configured of NPS server, you have to whitelist the IP address of NetScaler, which is SNIP. If there is no load balancer configured and NetScaler directly communicating to N NPS server, you need to whitelist NSIP. Let's move to the NetScaler in order to configure the LDAP as a primary authentication and RADIUS as a secondary authentication. I have already logged into the NetScaler. Now go to System, Authentication, Basic Policies and click on LDAP. As LDAP would be the primary authentication, so we will be creating a server LDAP server here. I have already three LDAP server configured. I'm not going to use them. I will create the new one. 
So just define the name of the LDAP server. Server IP, this IP is the LDAP load balancer IP. This is a security type like TLS, plain test and SSL. In order to secure the communication, I'm using SSL protocol. Connection settings, enter the base DN, your domain information, and then service account. This account will be created in the Active Directory. And after that, put the password of the service account here. Confirm administrator password and test network connectivity. This network test connectivity helps to check whether the Netscaler is able to communicate to your Active Directory server. Click on it. And if it is green means the server is reachable and the provided credential is valid. Other settings here, there is options for server logon name attribute. You can define SAM account name or UPN name. Currently, I'm going to use SAM account name only and click create. Now I'm going to create the policy, advanced policy. So go to the authentication, advanced policies and click on policy. Action type is LDAP and the action. Action we just created, then expression, it's true, means all requests will be accepted and click on create. So the authentication policy is created. I'm going to bind to the Netscaler on global level. Click on global bindings. and select the policy which we just created. And define the priority and click bind and done. Now we have created the LDAP policy and bound it to the global level. It means we should be able to authenticate with LDAP as a primary authentication. Let's to verify that. I'm going to log off it. Now let's log in with SAM account name. I am successful login to the Netscaler with Active Directory account. Now let's create the radius policy as a second factor authentication. I have logged into the Netscaler. Then click system authentication, basic policies and click on radius. Click on servers. I have already three policies created. I'm not going to use any of them. I will be creating the new one. I'll create a copy of it. I'll create a copy of it and just define the name of it. This is a server IP and this IP is a load balancer of the radius clients. Define the port number, enter the same secret key is specified when you whitelisting the ADC IP on radius client. This secret key and defined the secret key on the radius client must be match, else you will not be getting connectivity. Click on test radius reachability and server is reachable and the provided secret key is correct. Click create. Now server has been created. Go to, go to advanced policies. And now we need to create a policy level. These policy levels are already created. I will be creating the new one. Just define the name. Please make sure when you create a new policy label, it comes with the default setting, AAA TM request. You have to change it to RBA request. If this option is not changed, then MFA on the Netscaler would not gonna work. Click on continue 
and we will keep the default login schema. Let's bind the policy. I don't have the policy created. So let me create a new policy and then I will bind it again. Go to policy. I will create a new policy now. Define the name and action type is radius and change the action to MFA2 and expression is true. Create. Now go to the policy label in order to bind it. Click on policy binding and select policy which you just created. And done. Now the radius policy has been created. Let's bind the radius policy on the global level as a second factor authentication. Go to authentication policy and click on global bindings. I have already bound LDAP as a primary authentication and that worked. Now I am going to bind radius policy as a second factor authentication. So click on edit bindings and next factor would be the radius policy. Select this policy which I just created and select it and bind it. Now LDAP policy as well as radius policies has bound to the Netscaler on global level. Let's try to log in with primary and secondary authentication whether it is working or no. Log off, log out and I am putting the UPN name So now first authentication has been passed and it's requesting for putting the passcode as a second factor authentication. I got the OTP on my mobile. I am putting it here and click login on. And now second factor authentication is also working. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a nice day.